dear pure urology facebook viewers good evening one and all we have taken little time uh, for this uh, meeting to happen in the last uh, 12 days because of the heavy scheduled uh, of the conferences in india uh, i was traveling so i could not conduct physically this pure uh, now we are starting after 10 days gap uh, again uh, this program uh the primary idea of a pure uh, program is to show the surgical technique based video presentations by the eminent faculty across the world today we have chosen one topic uh, which is uh, commonly a problematic for the beginner is inferior calcium stone for rirs you know inferior calcium stone nowadays we do ct scan ivp may not be available you promise the patient that i will remove with rirs the moment you go in it's a deep uh, infundibulum uh, the lower pole angle with the pelvis and the ureter is very deep we cannot measure them with scale but when you put the scope you cannot reach the stone so what are the tips and tricks uh, sorry diverticular stone so uh, diverticular stone sorry uh, diverticular stone where to go we are discussing today similar to inferior calcium stone diverticular stone is more problematic because diverticular stone may be in a, a different location where the scope cannot reach identifying the orifice is difficult identifying the uh, the uh, stone is difficult some will say methylene blue some will say contrast so let us listen from the young dynamic urologist uh, dr bojraj lutel from the nepal recently last 3 years when i traveled to nepal for the conferences i realized that they are much much advanced in the stone management they are doing all advanced surgeries with tfl laser homium uh, laser homium 100 watts uh, for stone mini park uh, ultra mini park uh, rirs uh, digital scopes uh, everything they are using i am surprised the content of the nepal association conferences was very high i watched uh, one of the program of bojraj then i was impressed uh, so bojraj uh, uh, thank you for accepting the invitation i am privileged to uh, for you to take a tough uh, task tips and tricks in uh, diverticular stone so initially i mentioned sorry for that inferior calcium stone diverticular stone so we, how, how, how is the training pattern in nepal bojraj mbbs is there uh, yes sir it's 5 uh, and 1/2 years mbbs is there then uh then uh, uh then you you go for masters uh, masters yeah after best surgery is there ms general surgery is there yes after that mch is there after that mch yes so like india five and like, three years and then three years correct correct same same pattern we follow because we share the most of the academic uh, knowledge experience patient pattern demography many things we share with indian subcontinent so same pattern is there i think uh, because you are also uh, you are also in a teaching hospital where you teach mch students yes sir per year two uh, residents can join to us uh, this year the number has increased to 3 very good and so, uh, overall in nepal uh, how many how many uh, cities uh, will be more than 50000 population 1 lakh population maybe 10 will be there yeah around 10 15 correct 10 15 will be there yeah How many urologists are there in Nepal, roughly? Uh, the uh, for that now membership is one hundred twenty-two. Total is now one hundred twenty-two. One hundred twenty-two. Okay. So, uh, how how did you develop interest in urology? When did you decide to go to urology? During my M S career, you I met uh, eminent professors uh, uh, Balara Joshi, Prem sir, and Pawan sir, and Uttam sir. Hmm. in urology posting there uh, i thought that uh, this is one of the good area if i pursue my career in this uh, i may be heading uh, forward then i thought and, and that was the time but uh, uh, that was not materializing after passing M- ms then i have joined to peripheral part of uh, the country uh, from there i have given entrance examination open entrance examination nationwide uh, then i got selected in first rank within that university very good and and i could choose the subject as my uh, as urology as uh, further career your areas of interest in urology are uh, basically uh, in urology we talk so much in urology uh, urology oncology and uh, renal transplantation 
Uh, being in a government hospital, I cannot say that this and that. I have to serve all the kinds of uh, the, the patients. Kidney transplants also. Kidney transplants also. Yes, two or three uh, cases per week. Right. Yeah. So with this, uh, I will. Introduce you officially by sharing the screen, and then we will go to your presentation uh, in nutshell. So uh, now, the pure urology session, like all of you are following, this is video-based surgical presentation on RIRS for Kelly Shear Diverticular Calculate Tips and Tricks by Dr. Bojlaj Lutiel. Dr. Bojlaj Lutiel is Assistant Professor, Department of Urology and Kidney Transplant Surgery, TU Teaching. Hospital Institute of Medicine, Tribhuvan University, Kathmandu, Nepal. Area of interest are endo-urology, uro-oncology, and renal transplantation. As I asked, he involved in various teaching activities of MCH, MS, MBBS, and BDS programs of Maharaj Ganj Medicine Campus, Institute of Medicine, TU, Kathmandu. Dr. Bojraj is the reviewer in various journals, Journal of Society, General Surgeons of Nepal, General of Institute of Medicine, General of Nepal Health Research Council, Course Director for TUTH Curie Controversies in Euro Oncology, Annual Euro Oncology Update in 2020, Travel Grant Award by Japanese Society of Clinical Oncology to attend 57th Annual Meeting at Fukuoka, Japan, and to present on topic Nephron Sparing Surgery Experience with the TUTH. Highly appreciated. He is organizing Coordinator Complex Erythroplasty Workshop in collaboration with Kulakarni Institute of Research in the uh, year of 2017 from Kathmandu. He has more than 15 research publications published in many national journals. Excellent uh, curriculum by Te Bojraj. And I thank once again over to you for the presentation on uh, the uh, Calicial Diverticular Calculate Tips and Tricks. Thank you. Yes, Pujaraj, your screen is visible in full. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chandra Mohan and uh, Pirti Hospital and Pure Urology Program for giving me this uh, academic platform to share about uh, RIRS for Calicial Diverticular Calculi uh, Tips and Tricks. Uh, a very good evening to all the uh, urology uh, fraternity all around the globe uh, from Kathmandu, Nepal. Uh, I do not have any conflict of interest. Uh, outline of my presentation will be about introduction to calicial diverticula and diverticular calculi. How do we classify calicial diverticula? And then overview of the management of calicial diverticular calculi and then RIRS for calicial diverticular calculi tips and tricks. Uh, basically, I'll be focusing on more uh, principles and techniques. Uh, I'll be talking about that. It's all of us know that uh, calicial diverticular rare outpouching of the upper tract. Most likely we attribute to congenital developmental anomalies. These are non-secretory urothelium lined cavities. How do the urine gets filled inside the calicial diverticulum is by passive filling of the urine that refluxes from the adjacent collecting system. Yes. This is very rare anomaly. We know that in IBU studies, it shows the incidence of around 0.2 to 0.6 percent. And keep in mind that in pediatric and adult group, this, there is not much difference. This point also supports that this may be of more of congenital origin, but there are other hypotheses also. It may be acquired one also, but more, uh, more favor is that for the congenital anomaly. Quickly, let's go to the Wolfson classification of a calicial diverticula. This is based on the radiological classification. Uh, at that time, based on the IV in 1980, Wolfson et al. have classified pilocalicial diverticula into two types. Type one are basically polar one, and uh, they, the diverticulum communicate to either minor calyx or infundibulum. And type two, keep in mind that they are more of the mid zone or central one and they communicate to the major calyx or directly to the pelvis. This is radiological classification. 
originally given by Wilson in 1980 based on the IV findings. Subsequently, uh, Drexler et al. have given another classification. This is endoscopic finding because uh, after 1990, RIRS has come and then uh, a PCNL has uh, wide, widespread use and then uh, CD calicial diverticular they have classified that is a part of the diverticulum. You know that what are the parts of the common diverticulum? It has ostium that is mouth, it has infundibulum, and it has a diverticulum itself. So how is the condition of the mouth and neck or infundibulum? Uh, this retler has classified because it has therapeutic importance also. In type 1, the ostium mouth is open and neck is short. How short? He did not uh, uh, objectify anyway. And type 2 is closed mouth and short neck. Type 3 is closed mouth with long neck and type 4 with obliterated neck. So uh, this classification may have more, uh, uh, in, more, it gives much more information for endoscopic management of the stored disease in calicial diverticulum because either you will be approaching by uh, RIRS or by PCNL or whatever you have been doing, uh, this will be guiding us further or ESWL in some cases if you go further, then this classification, if you keep in mind, then uh, this gives better idea. So what is the location of the calicial diverticulum? By and large, if you see different series of uh, Medicine, Tim Schoen, and then Wagenacker and Abenaus, Abitaus, all those things, then all those uh, writers, then we find that upper pole has the highest incidence of uh, calicial diverticula and followed by mid and lower one. So upper has the upper hand for location of the diverticulum. So, uh, for upper calicial stone management, uh, our approach, especially if the stone is medium, medium or small size, then we naturally opt for either uh, RIRS or mini PCNL. And uh, if the stone also happens there, approach, approach may be much easier for us. So let's go to uh, calicial diverticular calculi. Uh, keep in mind that all the diverticuli do not form stones. Around 10 to 50 percent of the cases uh, can form the stones as a complication. Out of that also, often many of them are asymptomatic. If you tell the diverticulum has symptoms, then the symptoms are loin pain, recurrent UTI, renal abscess, or hematuria, those things can happen. So, so do we need to manage all the diverticular calculi? The answer is straightforward, no. Because innocuous uh, asymptomatic calculi, tiny calcific focus in corner of the kidney, better not to touch by any means. Keep in mind that majority of the patients are asymptomatic. The indications for operative intervention are only for symptomatic calicial calculi, diverticular calculi, maybe due to uh, the stone-related chronic pain, recurrent UTI, gross hematuria, or decline in renal function. Again, I would like to emphasize that for asymptomatic, uh, asymptomatic diverticular calculi, please don't disturb the sleeping line. This motto we have to follow. Let's go to the overview of treatment of calcial diverticular calculi. What are the factors that determine the choice of uh, uh, treatment uh, for CD calculi? First and foremost is the diverticular size and location, whether it is polar, mid-zone, parapelvic, anterior versus posterior one, patency of the infundibulum, open versus closed one, length of the infundibulum, short, maybe less than four millimeter or more than, long, more than, uh, more than that, the amount of the overlying renal parenchyma, if the overlying parenchyma is particularly very much thinned out, uh, uh, then uh, the treatment may be different. Size and density of the stone and surgeon's experience. Being in the era of minimally invasive surgical techniques for stone management, socket lithotripsy, PCNL, RIRS, laparoscopy and robotic, these are the techniques that we opt for management of the calcium diverticular calculi. So this cartoon or flow chart I would like to highlight again in summary. Calicial diverticular calculi, if those are asymptom asymptomatic, then go for periodic observation. If symptomatic, then better to have a look on imaging and what is the dreadler type one, two, three, four, what is there? If dreadler type one and two uh, and upper and mid polar, irrespective of the anterior or posterior location of the diverticulum, RIRS comes first and SOCOIP or mini can, can come other way. For type two and uh, type three and four, large calculi, maybe more than 12 or 15 millimeter, lower polar or posterior one, I think PCNL is preferred one, but you can attempt with endoscopic combined, endoscopic internal surgery or supine PCNL for anterior uh, CD, calcial diverticular calculi. Those 
the armamentarium also should keep in mind. Again, all the histones may not be amenable to RIRS or mini PCNL, then uh, laparoscopic uh, <clears throat> uh, approach or robotic if the facilities are available, and then you can opt for that. So th th these are the overview of the management of the calcial diverticular calculi. So same thing, uh, Professor Oliver Traxler from uh, France, uh, he has highlighted about based on the upper zone, lower zone, and mid zone, or whether anterior or posterior location. Of course, he's a great, great proponent of uh, RIRS, uh, pioneer in RIRS, uh, and uh, he has also suggested for below 12 millimeter stones, I think RIRS comes first. Especially for lower pole, posterior one, we should keep uh, PCNL also in mind. More than 12 millimeter size calcium diverticular stone, if large stones, if you talk in calcium diverticulum, then uh, uh, RIRS, and uh, if you go to lower pool or other one, then PCNL has definitive role. But upper anterior, uh, those area he has uh, is uh, very much uh, selective to go for RIRS. So why do we treat this calcial diverticular calculi? What is the aim of treatment of those calcial diverticular calculi? First and foremost is uh, uh, histone removal. Second one is improvement of the drainage of the diverticulum or obliteration of the diverticulum. And we always aim for with minimum morbidity because many of the surgical procedures, though we talk that it is minimally invasive one, but the complications are catastrophic and devastating. So let's go to RIRS for calcial diverticular calculi, tips and tricks. I'll be more focusing on principles and technique. I'll start one by one. We start with preoperative imaging and we go we opt for the with basic all standard preparation for RIRS, we go for flexible uh, ureterenoscopy, how to find the ostium, how to do infantibulotomy, what is the lasing technique, what is the exit strategy, and how do we follow up those patients? About those headaches, I'll be talking in the coming um, few minutes. Preoperative imaging, the most preferred one is CT urography or IBU, whichever you prefer. Keep in mind that this is a roadmap for management of CD calculi. This will give us idea about the location of the calcial diverticulum, number of the diverticula, opening, whether it is open or closed, ostium is open or closed, neck, length, angle, whether it is acute or obtuse, or whether it is obliterated or not. Contrast filling into the calcial diverticulum, that means that it's non-obliterative one, and uh, sometimes if the contrast does not go, then you think that it might be obliterative one. Uh, again, you should uh, typify that radiologically, that whether it is type one or type two at least. Uh, type one, uh, uh, diverticulum, again, already I've highlighted that. It will be more polar. Uh, it will be globust, globust, uh, globust one. And type two is more central or mid zone. It will be more round, spherical one. Calculate size and density, of course. But keep in mind that many of the times, once we go to, before entering the pelvic calcium system with uh, RIRS for diagnostic purpose, once you see navigate there, you may be surprised that stone is not visible. Such situations does come and preoperatively, you may not be thinking that whether there is calcium, whether, whether the stone is within the diverticulum or not. Few of the subtle uh, preoperative radiological findings can guide us about that. One of the important thing that from IBU or urography, uh, Plux uh, urography, if we go back there, you can read the interpapillary line of Hartson. Uh, if you see that curvilinear line, C type of line that, uh, that is coming and joining all the papillary tips, interpapillary lines, any radio opaque shadow or calicial system which is dilated or communicating to that PCS, if that is outside that line, it could be uh, uh, the calicial diverticulum or the eastern might be in calcial diverticulum. But keep in mind that this is not the 100% rule, the exception being parapelvic calculus and some of the type two or centrally located, uh, uh, centrally located uh, diverticula may be within the range of the interpapillary line. So this also we should keep in mind. But by this overall, the common type is type one uh, that you can identify preoperatively. For example, in the CT urography, you can see that in the first image, in axial image, you can see the hypertense lesion in the upper pole. Subsequently, in the MIP image of the CT urography, if you see that in the reconstructed image, sorry, 
Uh, there you can see the stone, uh, the stone and uh, calicial system that the diverticulum is uh, type one, upper polar. I could not see much opacification of the system and communication also I could not establish. So the stone might be within the upper polar diverticular, calicial diverticulum, obliterated one. So this will be Alfusan's uh, type one. And if you go to Drittler, then this might be type uh, three or four, something like that in uh, type four in, uh, if you go to Drittler type. So this case might be very, very difficult to go for RIRS or all those things. So by this also, by perioperative imaging also, it gives lots of idea to identify the diverticular stones. The aim is that you can perioperatively counsel the patient and you can prepare yourself for other alternative options also beforehand rather than telling the patients after he awakes from general anesthesia and then you are diverticular stone, uh, I, couldn't, I could do nothing or I have done this operation and uh, some treatment deviation was there. So all those things beforehand, uh, you can counsel the patient. This roadmap is always important to protect yourself and patient. Okay. So interoperatively, uh, same standard procedures we follow what we do for uh, RIRS, no doubt. Then, how to identify the ostium, that is opening of the diverticulum. Flex, using the flexible URS by direct vision, you can see the narrow opening of the ostium, small dimple or pitch you can identify. In this image on the right side, you can have a look there. Second option is that retrograde pyrogram that differentiates between obliterative versus non-obliterative calicial diverticulum. That gives fairly good idea about its relation to major calyx, minor calyx, pelvis, all those things. How much angulation to navigate all those things it will give the idea, very important uh, uh, investigation, retrograde pilogram. And if you could not find the ostium at all, then blue spritz test or blue dye test is one of the option. So in blue spritz test, we, uh, <clears throat> so in modified way we go these days, combined uh, contrast RPG followed by contrast, uh, this uh, blue dye installation, methylene blue we install, and then we wash with the uh, normal saline, with irrigation and then reflux of the uh, blue dye blue dye once it has been washed out from all other pcs because the diverticular uh, neck is uh, very narrow ostium is narrow whatever residual dye is there within the diverticulum that will be effluxing out very slowly we can identify the opening then only you can start for uh, diverticular this infundibulotomy and all other approaches so infundibulotomy how to go do? Basic idea is that not to damage any major vessels, not to core inside the renal parenchyma. Multiple superficial radial cuts we have to give. Gentle pushing of the scope and dilatation of the instrumentibulum with its cuts we have to do. By that, it will open up. The laser setting will be low power around 10 by 0.8 or uh, something like that. Laser fiber commonly used is 200 micron or 365, small one. So. Same thing I would like to show here. Small radial cuts in multiple places. Don't cut in one place and pour in. Otherwise, you will be losing the uh, vision. Bleeding will happen. And you might be losing the path at times. So again, I would like to emphasize that. Multiple superficial radial cuts. Gentle dilatation with the scope. Low power laser setting. Do not pour into the renal parenchyma. Once you enter the diverticular diverticulum, lasing main aim is for as far as possible for dusting and flushing. If at all that does not work, then you might need to go for chipping and basketing also. Sometimes uh, your stone may be located in very difficult awkward situation. At that time, different ergonomic maneuvers you may need to do. One of the option being, rather than uh, operating with the thumb to the uh, leverage, you might need to rotate opposite way, and then you can operate. You might need to operate with your index finger. So this reverse grip also might be needed, or sometimes you can. You might need to change the scope. Uh, for something like uh, this is uh, fiber optic uh, flexible URS. If you go to digital, then the laser fiber will be coming from uh, three o'clock, not from nine o'clock. That might also help you. So 
changing the scope or changing the maneuverability of the same scope uh, by different techniques, the changing in the ergonomic maneuvers, all those things also matter for reaching to the stone and dusting and uh, fragmenting the stone. So to have the good vision, you should have a good irrigation system and uh, that will help for localizing the stone in better way and to flush out the dust and fragments as well. That I would like to highlight here because with this, uh, you can complete the uh, laying uh, on, on time. So how to remove the stones that we have laid? Uh, uh, flushing, basketing, uh, by active removal of the stone, or sometimes you can relocate the stone to some other favorable calyx, and then uh, you can do dusting and uh, laying. So the main aim is to have the zero stone residue in calyxial diverticulum. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the uh, Gram does not move that well sometimes, so difficulties do arise. So why not to proceed further with RIRS for calcium diverticular calculi? If there is long neck with acute angle, scope is not negotiable. Please do not venture. Obliterated neck and ostium dreadlaw type four or type three, whatever is there, then false. Uh, then uh, these those cases, false passage with bleeding and poor vision and diverticular perforation. You should keep uh, keep in mind that better to stop because having, leaving the problem as it is better than dead solution. Another controversial area is that whether to obliterate the calicia diverticular epithelium or not. This is very, very controversial topic. After RIRS with wide infundibular tummy, there will be good drainage despite retrograde filling. For upper calicial and mid calicial diverticula, no need of obliteration. For lower calicial diverticula or calcial diverticula recurrent calculi, better to obliterate because there is dependent drainage. This is one of the school of thoughts, but it, it does not apply always. Historically, yes, most of the cases, those who undergo PCNL, the, the, the advice is to go for obliteration of the diverticular epithelium. Coming to exit strategy, Retrograde pilogram to see the patency of the infundibulum. Of course, it will be patent one once you have reached inside. But main worry is that of the extravasation and intervasation. Extravasation. DJ stenting, of course, this is required for decompression of the upper tract. Always you have to keep the DJ stent. But keep in mind that many of us suggest that to try to keep the pelvic oil of the stent inside the diverticulum. But many of the times, neither it is possible nor always mandatory. So you, you just main aim is that you just keep the DJ stent and come out. Don't try to fiddle around the calcial diverticular diverticulum to re, to send the divert, uh, this uh, pelvic coil of the DJ stent inside the diverticulum. Uh, Professor Traxler team has given at eighth step approach for RIS for CD calculi. Uh, uh, basic ideas again I have highlighted that uh, uh, URS guide wire application, then indigo carbine or methane blue installation, fluoroscopy, safety guide wire. We are not using safety guide wire that often. Uh, then irrigation with the normal saline and thought to have uh, a residual cavity washing out and you can see the fluoroscopy again, disappearance of the calicial cavities, persistent diverticula, uh, then exploration of the cavities and identification of the leakage of the indigo or uh, indigo carbine or methylene blue from the diverticular neck and introduction of the laser and incision of the neck, local fragmentation of the calcula and marsupialization. All those multiple steps, uh, uh, Professor Traxler's team has uh, uh, suggested uh, this is there also in the new uh, Smith's endurology also. If somebody wants to have a look, uh, they can go through this also. So uh, keep in mind that uh, RIRS is not uh, uh, de uh, devoid of complications because uh, calicial diverticular calculi are one of the complicated uh, form of stone disease, though it's a rare one. A uh, few of the complications that we should always keep in mind is the bleeding and perinephric hematoma, urosepsis, a rupture of the diverticulum and loss of the stone, false passage creation during infundibulotomy, urine extravasation and urinoma, ureteral uh, laceration, and, uh, and most important is the damage to the scopes also does happen because this is detrimental to the patient and uh, detrimental to the uh, institute and us also. Yes, yes. Coming to follow up, uh, we keep the stand for around three to four weeks. And we, we do repeat uh, ultrasound after six weeks or three months, and then annual follow-up is needed. Uh, we know that stone disease is a benign condition. 
but it has a malignant potential to recur by the rate of around 10% in one year and around 50% in five years. So we should always warn to the patient that the factory is the kidney. I always tell to the patient that your factory for histone formation is kidney. By different correcting the different anatomical abnormalities and metabolic abnormalities, we can reduce the chance of histone formation, though we may not be able to make it nil. Then again, patient will ask me that for gallstone, uh, if somebody has operated long back, it is not coming. Why in renal stone it is coming? At that situation, I tell to the patient that the philosophy of management of gallstone and then kidney stone is different. Gallstone management is for our patients, stone means stone for everybody. Then I told them this is totally extirpative surgery, gallstone management. And kidney, manage, kidney stone management is conservative one. We want to preserve the organ as far as possible. We don't want to throw the organ. That is not possible. So few of the uh, patients do understand the philosophy and they agree with us. But many of the times they might be scolding us also after recurrence also. So we should always keep in mind that they need metabolic evaluation. I would like to highlight on that. Why it is needed? By metaphylaxis, you can reduce the chance of future formation of the histones. So it is mandatory uh, to prevent the recurrence of the calculi and to avoid the need for further surgical treatment despite the urinary stasis. Usually, we take a sample of the histone for X-ray diffraction technique or FT Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. In our part, uh, we, we send for FTIR. And metabolic evaluation, we go for blood test and 24-hour urine collection analysis. Some of the investigations will yield uh, really good, uh, in, 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 in like uh, uh, hyperuricosuria, uh, gouty diathesis, hyperoxaluria, hypocytaturia. All those cases we can pick up from this group of patients also. So uh, by this, uh, I have reached to my conclusion. I have come to my conclusion. Uh, majority of the uh, calicial diverticular calculi do not need active treatment. Keep in mind that calicial diverticular calculi are a special category of calculi in complicated anatomy. Selection of the case for RIRS is important in patients with CD calculi. Keep in mind that all patients with calicial diverticular calculi are not for RIRS. Common intraoperative assisting tools are retrograde pilogram followed by a blue spritz test. The aim of the treatment is uh, zero residue of calculi with wide infundibulotomy. And uh, always we should know that when to stop on time because before having landing into complications and uh, inviting the catastrophe. Uh, thank you very much for your listening patiently. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions, please? Thank you very much, uh, Bojal. That's a crisp presentation. Now, uh, I will, uh, nearly 100 uh, people have attended the program because there's some gap and festival season. Still, it is very good uh, attendance. 100 uh, audience have attended. Uh, let me discuss because this is YouTube link, uh, which will be there forever. So those juniors who wanted to uh, know, they will, they will clarify all these doubts. Number one, which flexible scope commonly you use in such difficult situations? Do you prefer disposable scope or a good flexible fiber optic scope? Which one you prefer? Yes. <clears throat> so my preferred one is uh, good flexible fiber optic scope. Uh, flexible. So, far, so, so far I'm using, so far I'm using. In fiber optic scopes, uh, I feel Flex X2 is more flexible. You also agree with that? Flex X2, yes, correct. It starts. It's a starch. It is uh, durable and flexible. You can reach such difficult situations more easily. Yes, sir. And uh, if uh, too much uh, lazing is there and awkward angle, even disposable scopes may be cost effective. By chance, if you lose the scope also, there is no problem. So my preference is that it's always better to have two scopes with you. Yeah. One disposable and one Correct. reusable. Reusable. So in depending difficult, on situation, depending on situation, you can use either of them. Yes, correct, correct. Which laser you use normally? Holmium. Holmium laser, yes. So holmium. Uh, still, we are using low power, but we have all the armamentarium for uh, this one. Uh, one time we are using at the moment. Yeah, prostate you will use hundred watts, and for the stone you use less than twenty watts only. Yes, for prostate, we are using uh, uh, 120 watts uh, uh, luminous. Okay. That is luxury. Yeah. Luminous has high power, 
you can de deal with large stones also. See, yeah. we have discussed about the RIRS. Let me ask a question about the PCNL. In diverticular stone, if you uh, if you puncture the stone, uh, if the contrast is not going into the diverticulum, you will do stone guided puncture. Yeah, first and foremost is that we always follow the principle with RPG retrograde pyelogram and contrast filling. But uh, it, if there is obliterative one, contrast will not go. So we'll we'll go for the stone guided puncture. Correct. So in in such case, coiling of the coiling of the guide wire will be very less. How do you how do you how do you how do you uh, get out of this problem of coiling less guide wire? Which guide wire you will use in such cases? Better to go with J tip guide wire than straight teromo. Okay. But if you do not have J tip also, then you can go with uh, uh, teromo itself also. But uh, uh, J tip green guide wire may be more but, stable on that position. Yeah, this difficult. Green guide wire, green guide wire PTFE J tip, which is less costly, may give some resistance in the system for not to slip, so that you can you can use the alkane and then go there. Okay. Uh, RIRS. Uh, if the stone is uh, not only lower calyx, if it is more anterior, it is much more difficult. Do you feel anterior, medial, uh, and lower calyx is more difficult? Uh, do you think that uh, CT reconstructive images video will you get? Normally, we don't get uh, reconstructive videos. It is very difficult. We see CT film. It will be in the lower pole. We do RGP. We go inside. After that, if it is seen, okay. If it is not seen, if it is small, we will leave it. Yeah, that, that practical situation does come. Yeah, well, what is your opinion? What will you do? Like that only or you have any, or you, you give consent for both RIRS and PCNL. If the RIRS is not feasible, you will do PCNL like that? So before and uh, I prefer to go to console and have a streaming of the CT scan or I prefer to have CD of the CT scan so that I can sit myself, uh, myself with the uh, city films or uh, with the radiologist and discuss and plan to some extent. Uh, before intervention without CT urography, I do not go much of the times for such a peripherally located calculi, again to rule out diverticular calculi. While counseling to the patient, all those anatomical difficulties, I do counsel. Those who agree to puncture, I go, I go with the preparation for mini PCNL and all those things and consent. Otherwise, if it is not visible, then sometimes many of the cases uh, just going and doing diagnostic uh, flexible URS and coming back and patient going home safely on first day, that also does happen in practice. Okay. So uh, what, uh, what type of uh, uh, access sheet uh, like, you, do you use access sheet in these cases in the upper ureter, lower ureter, mid ureter? It is irrelevant question, I know. But uh, uh, if you keep in upper ureter, the maneuverability of the flexible scope in the inferior calyx may hamper. Any opinion? It's my opinion. I am not uh, saying dogmatically. Uh, how do you how do you negotiate the flexible scope to inferior calyx in difficult situations in relation to the access sheet? Or is it good if you don't use the access sheet? Uh, basic purpose of excess sheath is uh, to increase the longevity of the scope and to decrease the internal pressure uh, and septic and other complications. So already you know that this is complicated cases. I always prefer to use the excess sheath, no doubt. Uh, the problem with uh, keeping the excess sheath during RIRS, especially for, uh, for going to lower calyx and uh, uh, end of the excess sheath near the PUJ region is that uh, it causes uh, splinting to the scope and then deflection will be difficult. In that situation, I slightly pull down the excess sheath, maybe somewhere around uh, sacroiliac joint level. And then uh, by that, I get uh, some component of extra maneuverability of the scope. Yeah, I uh, also feel in ectopic kidney as well as diverticular stone, as you said, yeah. lower the access sheet better for maneuverability. Not, and, not above SI joints. Yeah, uh, not above SI joint. What about, uh, uh, what about the uh, diverticulum with, uh, without opening scene and very close to your scope on CM, will you try to do some amount of digging blindly, uh, CM guided or ultrasound guided or individual uh, calculation? Will you do that or you don't do that if you don't find the opening of the diverticulum? 
despite blue dye test, if uh, I do not get uh, the opening site, then uh, I have tried one or twice, but uh, most of the times I got lost. And then <laughs> that <laughs> approach I have, I, I do. You are very honest. I yeah. want to get the same information to the audience that if it is a diverticulum which is closed and not opening, I Don't also tried one or two times. I thought I will get it, but I did not get it. It caused a little bit of bleeding out of fear. I came out, luckily nothing has happened. <laughs> so instead no. of that, uh, leave it or try one or two attempts PCNL. If the guide wire doesn't coil, leave it is better. Any, any uh, over dilatation, under dilatation with large bore can cause bleeding and unnecessarily what a beautiful sentence he told, don't wake up the sleeping lion. Unnecessarily, you put, you throw a, a stone and it, it, uh, you, it will bark back and you, you will not be able to get saved yourself. Yeah. Extra yeah, yeah. Thing that is very nice. So blind attempt of the diverticular stone should not be done. It should not be done. Uh, post PCNL staghorn calculi also, when they get treated, one or the two stones get entrapped in the mucosa. They also look like diverticular stones. Uh, you, do you agree that uh, uh, some stones can be trapped in the mucosa when staghorns are removed and they, later on they will be seen in the CT. If they are asymptomatic, you told very nicely that don't do anything. If they are symptomatic, I think same principles we have to follow. Here uh, we are treating the uh, patient symptoms, not the imaging. Yes, so that is very important. So we don't treat the image small, because here, small diverticular stone don't promise the patients too much. Though especially they are difficult if they are not identified, you cannot cut anywhere. At least large stones you can attempt PCNL, but less than one centimeter stone, oh my God, it, you, you will be lost if you dig wrongly. You have the differential diagnosis of those calcific spots in kidney. Forget about diverticulum. Yes. Those differential diagnosis, I would like to highlight at this point. Yeah, you should tell it. Because uh, for uh, residents and for all of the urologists also, all that glitters is not gold. Yes. All that radiodendron shadow in the kidney is not diverticulum. Yes. It, it may be calcified cyst. Yes. And if you go to Bosniak type 2, 3, whatever is there, number one. Second one, maybe uh, that may be milk of calcium in the diverticulum, which may not be stone. Yes, yes. That changes with position, supine, <laughs> uh, I mean, decubitus, if you change, then uh, once you ask the patient to stand up and then come and again do the ultrasound, the picture might be vanishing. Yes. Uh, second one. Uh, third one is uh, renal tumor with calcification. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, fourth one that always you should keep in mind is that becoming coming from the tropical countries. That's uh, tuberculosis. Yeah, yeah. And there are many causes of uh, medullary or cortical. Long infundibulum with a very narrow mouth uh, can be interpreted, interpreted as diverticulum if you have not done proper IVP. And in C it can be imprinted. In fact, in RGP. It may not be delineated in flexible scope. You can see a small, well-lined mucosa. Normally in diverticular, it will turn be well-lined. Nicely mucosa lined going into the into the mouth. We will say that it is calcium. It's a calyx. Yeah. So, so you are these four differential diagnoses are very important. You said calcified sit. Second is milk of magnesia. Third calcium, is yeah, yeah. and fourth is tuberculosis in our countries. Yes. So. Uh, please uh, keep a watch on this. And how do you how do you approach medially located upper pole uh, stones? Do you like to do angio before doing these cases, or not necessarily? Because uh, two medial upper pole stones, if you try to work hard on them to remove, sometimes bleeding can be torrential. I feel upper calyx upper upper calyx stones uh, uh, in front block close medial. They are difficult to treat even with PCNL, especially if the stone is on the medial side of the PCS axis. What yeah. is coming? Uh, at times, upper calicial stones uh, are too much, much, much tricky. You know, you think that you are reaching there, but uh, you may not be able to reach. Uh, yes. while, while approaching for RIRS, uh, practically, I have not done any angiography beforehand in RIRS preparation. Yes. Or for PCNL also preoperative uh, angiography, I have not done. Uh, yeah. Again, again, we go there and we try with different maneuvers uh, uh, with uh, whether we can see the ostium or not. Blindly, we do not cut. Uh, angulation-wise, uh, uh, 
again, uh, again, reverse grip might help there that I was showing there beforehand. Uh, because deflection up, down, or whatever no, is there. Sometimes, uh, if, if you move 180 this side, sometimes extreme external rotation with this angle, yes, shape would bend also there. Then, scope damage chances are also very high in such cases. So, in ergonomics, in yes, yes. In ergonomics, in RIRS, if you talk about this, you know, to and fro movement, yeah, then uh, uh, deflection up and down, these are four. Then coordination and supination, six. And if you combine any of these, then th that will be the composite movement. Yes. So this seventh movement is important for those cases what uh, uh, Dr. Sandra was talking. Yes. You should be very, very careful uh, holding the scope in reverse grip or changing the scope might help you because laser, uh, for example, on the left side, your laser is going through the nine o'clock in fiber optic and three o'clock from digital. Changing the scope might help you to uh, dig in the ostium. So ergonomics in upper polar, uh, this diverticulum medially located, you might require this composite movement, one movement alone the, in that situation may not work. Yeah. And uh, uh, do you think that uh... Uh, these uh, diverticular stones can be a source of recurrent UTI also sometimes? Yes, sir. Uh, it's possible. Though, uh, uh, two things are there in kidney stone and infection. One subset is that infection itself can cause a stone. Other subset is that the stone itself can provide a sanctuary for the bacteria to sit and multiply. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how many cases, uh, if you say 100 cases you have done, uh, what gives you in your mind, forget about the, uh, the guidelines, I'm asking you, when you see the CT, when you see the IVP, when you see the, any other imaging study, what keeps you go for RIRS, what keeps you go for directly P7? Uh, it's so, mainly... Yeah. For size, let us matter size, location. These two size, location, and uh, we go for the shared decision making with the patient with uh, patient preference. Oh, great, great! Highly appreciated. We give the cafeteria approach of decision making. Look, you have this problem. These are the solutions we have in our coffee shop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So all are good, uh, but it's these are the pros and cons of all those treatments. Somebody has histone clearance good with uh, some complications. Some, some might need multiple sessions with slightly less eastern clearance may be there. So this approach we go. Uh, whether there is any anatomical abnormality or not, of course that also decides. Uh, but basically eastern size, location, uh, nature of the eastern that we think and then uh, patient choice. Okay. So uh, to, to last couple of questions, do you think that your uh, sepsis and complication rate after doing the RIRS in diverticular stone may be more? You have to be careful because one pelvis and ureter has to decompress and the diverticulum also has to decompress with water. Bo bo yes. two, two cavities are there. there. So diverticular mouth is narrow and you just entered. Uh, then you keep on doing for a long time. There may be intraorenal reflex and calicial rupture also as you mentioned. So yes. In between, do you like to see put in contrast or you want to quickly finish or you want to use basket so that, or you want to make calicial diverticular opening a little bigger than in large, large stone? This is one question. Yeah. So to prevent the post-operative uh, sepsis and uh, infection, uh, we should cut short the duration and intrapelvic pressure also. So our uh, use of the excess sheet is always, always advisable. Uh, to cut short the duration, yes. Uh, better to if, if it is going to take more time, maybe for more than 12 millimeter or 15 millimeter stones, then uh, we might need to do basketing and do the lazing uh, outside or take out the chips. Uh, all those maneuvers we have to do. Antibiotic prophylaxis should be given beforehand. And after also for a couple of days, we continue to have antibiotics. Uh, last question. Normally in diverticular opening, when you make, people are now changed to one st the fixed position. Cutting is ruled out because you cannot predict any vessel deeper where it comes. No three o'clock, no seven o'clock, no seven o'clock. 
some here and there all around we make small cuts and go inside so that submucosally major vessel vessel coming is unlikely but one problem with this is especially with tfl is a lot of fibrosis happens and it may close it again uh, if you do like that so any comment uh, circumferentially if you cut uh, it may open up well but at the end you are creating fibrosis a small comment on this so though our aim is uh, to make the diverticulum uh, uh, diverticulum in diverticular infundibulum bigger and open one naturally many of the times whether you use tfl or olimium it might be going to be closed yeah few of the uh, the nephrostomy tube crossing or digestant crossing is theoretically no use because only two weeks only it will protect like a foley catheter in structure with ra one same thing uh, so so irrespective of the nature of the energy used basic idea that you should use low wattage in the power yeah that is important uh, thermal energy of tfl is more than olmium energy but if you do the lower setting i don't think that this will cause more uh, fibrosis or all those things in that particular area mm. whatever you do our aim is to make the uh, diverticulum uh, stone free Yeah. From where this histone forms again, the constituents in the urine excreted from other calyces go there and form. If it is at all to obliterate, let it to obliterate early. Better. That is non-functional unit. That particular area is non-functional. This is not functional because urothelium lined cavity, non-secretory one. Anyway, yeah. that is a function of the diverticulum. Yeah. So passive filling it will stop there. It's not going to produce any urine, whether it is obliterated or not. Question from Majruk. It is actually you have mentioned, but still he has asked. How are the? Is it essential to uh, treat asymptomatic uh, lower calcial stones? Small. I you said no, no, no. No. Don't treat the imaging. Treat the patient. Yeah. So definitely up to I think if the patient is not at all having symptoms, incidentally, incidentally detected, especially small stones, especially lower pole, why to touch? Definitely they are lions. Don't wake them up, and it is a very good statement he has given. So a uh, lot of point learned, especially classifications. We don't see PGs; it will be useful depending on the mouth diverticulum length, uh, the diverticulum communication. Very important. Mixed uh, contrast and methylene blue is also important point you told today, and you told that uh, lower pole prefer epithelial, upper pole prefer uh, uh, RIRS, and majority of the stones are from RIRS upper pole. And you said that multiple areas you should not cut. Uh, so but you should cut so that in one area deep cut should be avoided to uh, avoid the injury to the vessel which may bleed and uh, you said that a laser a mechanism of the stone is same like any other stone extreme torque movements can damage the scope also you mentioned this is a summary of today's talk and uh, you have really pictureized you have shown in the video also i appreciate your uh, this video i have i have listened in nepal so i was impressed so Uh, this is a less common area less common people will talk so that's why i thought uh, since then uh, i will be happy to get a talk this and you made it today thank you very much bodraj and i appreciate in future also if you have any good videos uh, which is useful for the pgs we will regularly do it please it's my pleasure sir it's my pleasure thank you very much uh, have a good time and great time